This works so well that virtually every county and every city adopted this same concept when using their house numbers. And this is how Jimmy John's gets to your door freaky fast, all right? If you understand this concept, you will then be able to understand how houses are numbered when you go, oh, it's 400, you know, 415 North something. Well, that 415 tells you it's 0.415 miles North of whatever the zero line is. So let's take a look at it and you will get the concept of what I'm saying. So I've taken the liberty to actually do this a little differently today and use it this method where I've got it pre-drawn with nice and pretty lines. So in your book, I will tell you now that I actually do what I feel to be a better job then the book explains it, they kind of jump around a little bit. So let me go through this, and then when you read this evening or this afternoon behind me, you will be able to go, oh yeah, I remember him saying that. So what is comprised is this thing called a series of meridians that run north and south. And in the picture that I've got on the screen, I have drawn this particular meridian red, so that we could easily identify it. Indiana uses meridian number two. They are called the principal meridian. All right. Do not confuse that with prime meridian. A prime meridian deals with time. This is a principal meridian. and it runs north and south. Running parallel to that are a series of range lines. This right here is a range line. These range lines run north and south, all right? So that will allow you to identify all of these range lines. Now, there is a strip of land that you will see between each range line, and that is called a range. As in home, home on the range. That's where this term comes from. These ranges are strips of land that are six miles wide. So the distance between each range line is six miles. So as you can see, you get start getting this grid pattern or this rectangular system. Intersecting those are what we call a baseline. In this particular picture, I have drawn the baseline as red, and it is intersecting or bisecting all of the uh, range lines. Running parallel to the range lines, you will see these lines called township lines. And there is a trick to this that you can see the flat part of the T running horizontal. So that that means a township line where the vertical part of the R would make the range lines. These township lines are also six miles wide. And what it creates, as you can see here, is a strip of land. And that strip of land is called a tier. A tier. And if you've ever heard of tier gardening, like on the side of a hill or the side of a mountain, it runs horizontally. That's how you would also mow the side of a hill. You don't mow a hill up and down and up and down. You mow it horizontally. So try and remember that. So where a tier strip intersects a range line or a range, you get an overlapping section that is called a township. All right. Now, 
do not confuse this geographic township with a political township like Center Township or, or White River Township. Those are for politics. It's the same kind of concept, but this is a geographic township. And this township is six miles wide by six miles tall. So it is 36 square miles. This is a township. Now we need to identify each township. And if you've ever played the game Battleship, anybody played Battleship? No? Okay. It's going to suck. <laughs> Battleship is an intersecting coordinate of the top row and the side row. Same concept here. That's how we identify each one of these townships. So watch this. Obviously, we got the north range line here so that we can see this. Our townships, if we looked at this one, this is one tier north of the zero line. The second one here would be two tiers north of the zero line. And it would be north because it's up. Conversely, it is this range here is one range west of the zero line, which is the meridian. This range here would be two ranges west of the zero line. So that township is identified as two tier north, two ranges west. That is the only township in that meridian section. So you need to attach it to the meridian. That township is two tiers north, two ranges west of principal meridian number two. Okay, so just for fun, what is this one? I don't know what tell that color is, rainbow color. It's supposed to be green. What is this township would be labeled? Anybody want to care to hazard a guess? Notice it's, here is a range, that's one, that's two, so it would be three ranges west, and then it, here is a tier that is south of the meridian. This one is the second tier, it would be two tiers south. Now, you could say two tiers south, three range west, or three range west, or west, two tiers south. There really is no preference on if you mention the tiers or the ranges first. But just understand that this point here is what I was talking about. Where that meridian meets the baseline is called a pivot point. And I found this in the Indiana version, and it's way down by French Lick, Indiana in Orange County because that grid is used by parts of Kentucky, parts of Illinois, and parts of Indiana, all right? <clears throat> so that is the basic concept. Has everybody got that? Thumbs up. If not, we can do another one, all right? So you must identify the township and attach it to each meridian. Well, the problem with that is that is a 36 square mile township. That is pretty huge. If I asked one of you guys to pick me up and bring me to class tomorrow, you would have to find me in that 36 square mile. Now I know I'm a big guy, but I would hope that you would say, I need a little more information. Glad you asked. Let's give you some more information. 
So what I'm going to do is now blow up that township. And which one did we use? Two, let's use three range west, two tier south. So this one is three ranges west, two tiers south. So if you think about it, all I did was blow up that particular township so that we could see it a little better. All right. That township is six miles by six miles. which creates a 36 square mile township. These townships are then further divided into 36 sections is the word we're looking for. 36 sections. So with a little math and the help of your calculator and your toes, you can figure that if there are 36 sections inside of this 36 square mile, you know that each one of these sections are one mile by one mile. And when we start numbering them, we start up here in the northeast corner because remember when this started back in 1785, we landed on this big rock in the northeast section of the United States. So everybody was already up here and they went that way to measure. So we do by starting up there and then they literally started pulling those chain gangs and they started numbering them, section one. And then as you can see, it goes this way. Now, the word for the day is baustrophodonic. Baustrophodonic, try and fit that in a conversation. Baustrophodonic means serpentine-like or like an ox plow. And if you notice, when oxen plow a field, they do not get to the end of the field, pick their stuff up, walk all the way back, set their plow down and start again. Why would they waste the time and the effort to do that? So what they do is they literally turn around and go back the other way. So our sections, as you can see, are numbered very much like a serpentine. They start in the northeast corner, go across the six, turn around and go back. Get to 12, turn around and go back. And you can see the pattern. And it creates, and I love it when a plan comes together, 36 sections. Each one is one mile by one mile. So if I told you that I lived here, now we're getting a little closer. One of the things I want to mention is, and you need to memorize this purely by memorization, section 16 is the schoolhouse section, all right? Now, remember, I'm talking like little house on the prairie type of schoolhouse. And the reason they chose 16, if you'll notice, we build a school right there, that's virtually the center of a township. Heard that old joke about, well, I walked three miles to get to school uphill both ways in the snow, three miles. That's about the furthest any student would ever have to walk to school. 